With the likes of social media and the internet being so readily available, providing us instant access to all the information we could ever want, are museums still relevant? Today I'm at the Derby Museum and Art Gallery to find out. This is our nature area, and this gallery profiles nearly 2,000 specimens from across the world from our natural history collection. From crawling, jumping, swimming, and fluttering, these animals have found their way to a new home. The importance of this display is to act as a stimulus to inspire you to take notice of your own natural world. After watching this, I hope for you to really take notice of the natural world around you, to be inspired and to truly appreciate how precious life is. In 1895, workmen digging a well in Allenton, Derby, found some large bones. When they were pieced together, they formed this partial skeleton of a young adult hippo. It was deduced that the hippo died where it was found, 120,000 years ago. Ichthyosaurs evolved from land-dwelling animals to marine creatures. Their name means fish lizard. They became extinct about 90 million years ago, 25 million years before the dinosaurs died out. My name's Spencer Bailey. I'm the collections manager here at Derby Museums. It's my responsibility to oversee quite a lot of uh, aspects of collections, including collections care, and I manage our museum database as well. Museums are important for a number of reasons. They hold a huge amount of um, material, historic material, scientific material, um, which is able to be made accessible, not just as visitor attractions, but to researchers um, and you know, for a variety of means, so students use museums a lot, um, independent researchers mu use museums a lot. And also, they are a space where people can learn and where people uh, can have ideas challenged as well. Um, a lot of museum collections can be quite contentious and controversial, uh, and it's, it's sort of the role of museums to actually try and engage in those, in those dialogue about those um, about those issues. The Archaeology Gallery. This masterpiece down to the left of me is made from a single oak tree trunk. This Bronze Age longbow is over 3,400 years old and one of the longest ever discovered, originally being over 10 metres long. Roman Derby. Excavations have revealed many clues about Roman Derby. Strutz Park, Belpo Road area, the first fort, Little Chester, the second fort and town, and Derby Racecourse, cemetery and industrial site. These beautiful pieces of Anglo-Saxon stone sculpture come from St. Altman's Church in Derby and St. Whiston's Church in Repton. The most spectacular piece is the large sarcophagus, which is thought to be the coffin of St. Altman himself. The other pieces are fragments of stone crosses and grave markers, all richly carved with animals, people and interlace. I think the most important things about museum, and especially to me, um, is you get all the culture and all the history in one place. Like it keeps 
all the important things from local history and like national history, especially here, all in one, and it's a very impressive building, all in one impressive building, all the different levels, and you're just able to take it all in, all in one go, and come out just with a broader, better mind, really. The importance of museums is that they're there to preserve culture and history for the, the present and for many generations to come afterwards. There's uh, plenty of stuff that people can still go and see that, if it wasn't for museums, wouldn't be around to this day. The Joseph Wright Gallery in Derby is home to the world's largest collection of Joseph Wright works. Born in 1734 in Derby, Wright is an internationally renowned artist whose works adorn the walls of major galleries across the world. Famed as the painter of light for his association with the intellectual key members of the movement known as the Enlightenment. He's considered to be one of Britain's most interesting and wide-ranging painters. The Joseph Wright Gallery is a permanent space dedicated to showcasing his wide range of spectacular paintings, alongside small temporary displays of drawings and prints from the museum's collections. There really isn't anything that can open your mind to new possibilities the way a painting can. Be it one minute or ten, looking at a painting does so many wonders to the human mind and creates experiences that other sections within a museum cannot. I think you know most museums now have a social media presence. We have a social media presence. You know, a lot of people are on social media. There's lots of people who aren't on social media as well. And but also, I think there's nothing like engaging with real objects and real specimens and real collections. Um, however much you can see pictures of things on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, uh, I think interacting with the real thing even when it's in a case and you can't touch it, is, is something that really I don't think social media is ever going to be able to, to replicate or replace. And I think actually a lot of, um, we, we also find a lot of people perhaps who maybe hadn't been museum visitors and maybe are uh, engaging, maybe because they've seen something on social media. They've, so, I mean, it's, it's a way of us promoting ourselves as, as well. So I, I don't think, it, um, I don't think social media is really going to have a long-term impact, a negative impact on, on museum visitors, I think just the opposite in fact. This is the home of Derby and Derbyshire's soldier stories. All the way from the days of muskets and swords to the present day. The evolution of the sheer bravery of the British soldiers from 1817 to 1992, collecting some of the most historic events known to the British society uniform of Captain John Chambers of the Alfreton Town Troop of the Derbyshire Yeomanry. It is made up of a type of hat called a shako and a light dragoon style jacket. The braiding and stitching on the uniform are of solid silver thread. Modern warfare and the modern soldier, keeping the peace. Most of the deployments of the Lancers since the Second World War were either as infantry or as reconnaissance units. Because of their basic skills, soldiers of the 9th and 12th Royal Lancers are able to carry out a variety of tasks. Due to the nature of reconnaissance, the young officers and men became very experienced and have to act independently. They also have to become used to operating under the eyes of the world media and as part of the UN forces. It's very interesting. There's different parts of history that you can come in 
and observe and, 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 and as I said, you know, there's a real mystery to it. Um, and you can really enjoy, you know, just going through the time period and the different cultures and appreciate them. And I think that's what you know, attracts people to come into the museums. And I think that's what attracts people to just history itself is just the past and just learning from it and seeing it and understanding how, how far we've come. Sometimes it is nice to be able to see something in actual real life and kind of you can understand it more if you can actually see it or like touch it. Or I'm interested in learning about you know different cultures, different places, the history of everything and even though not not all types of history exactly appeal to me, I do by and large enjoy museums and I think they're very important. The secret of the mummies, and the mummy you see right here, is that it's in fact one of the first objects obtained by the Derby Museum. The mummy is thought to be from Thebes in Egypt, and to be more than 3,500 years old. Damn, that's older than me. Welcome to Objects of Love, Hate and Fear, a world collection, a friendly new gallery filled with ordinary and extraordinary objects from around the world. This exhibition is built on a foundation of shared experiences that are common to people around the world. And these values, emotions and actions have informed and shaped every step of the project. The room is arranged into seven zones, entitled Consume, Believe, Conflict, Create, Adorn, Communicate and Furnish. Each of these objects that you'll experience has a history of human connection, having been crafted, used, loved, lost, stolen, collected, stored or hidden, and now displayed with the greatest respect. They connect to historic events full of everything from horror, joy and everything in between. And I think people, many people have their favourite things as well. And, and, you know, so I think, they, I mean, also I mentioned researchers and, you know, people doing academic study or, or, or independent research, obviously they use museums. But, uh, you know, many people we see in, these, in this museum are, are repeat visitors. They're people who, who have, they have, sometimes they just have a favourite thing that they like coming to see. All in all, as you've been following me around this beautiful museum, I think you can tell just how important and special they really are. What you get with this museum, and many more, is the feeling of the past and the remembrance of how important they truly are. And how without museums, we wouldn't have the memories of how we've changed and adapted throughout the years to get to where we are now. It gives you a sense of reality and the now as you stand looking at all these beautiful pieces of memorabilia throughout this museum. It inspires you and gives you hope, and in other cases, creates beliefs and feelings to do bigger and better things. Museums aren't just buildings filled with the past for no reason. They're designed with a purpose, to remember how we're living today and what previous ancestors would have done for us. To create a world of peace, love, and to become inspirited. To achieve great things and follow in the footsteps of the incredible people that came before us. We all have the ability to become someone and do something meaningful with our life that can be remembered. And this museum just proves that. So, are museums still relevant? What do you think?